Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tenez the and welcome to this special Games Guide edition of Medieval 2 Total War. Today we're looking at how you can change both the religion and the culture of your factions. Now, you might ask why exactly you'd want to do that. Well, to me, I think the answer is twofold. Number one, there's just a bit of historical accuracy. So for groups like the Mongols and Timurids, I know in my unlocking those faction videos that some people have asked how they can change that religion. And you know what, we're going to find out it's fairly simple. But you also might want to make your life just that little bit more challenging. I think if you go and change, say, the Holy Roman Empire over to a Muslim faction, suddenly the game's going to be an awful lot more tricky. If you find this game just a little bit too easy, there's maybe a new way of making the game that bit more challenging for you. As for changing the culture, it'll probably just help you get immersed into the faction you've just changed the religion of. We'll look in a bit more detail later, of course, but it does change some of the UI as well as some of the building trees. We'd head straight inside the data file of Medieval 2 Total War. However, the file we need is not actually accessible unless you've used the Unpacker tool. Luckily, the game does actually provide that tool for you, and I do have a video giving you a bit of a guide of how you can use that. So, for the meantime, we need to go back into Medieval 2 Total War and into the data folder. Inside here, we can scroll right the way down to the bottom until we find Deska underscore SM Factions. Once inside the file, I went straight down to the Holy Roman Empire because, of course, this is the faction that I'm going to change. It's actually quite an intriguing little file, this, because it has all sorts of stuff like preferring naval invasions as no or yes. It also has things like the colour scheme, if that's the sort of thing that interests you. But, of course, what we're really focusing on today is this here, the culture and the religion. Currently, of course, they are Catholic, but if we want to go and change it around, I simply need to type in here, Islam. And now, if we save this up and load the game, we would actually be an Islamic faction. Although, before you change things in here, I would always suggest it's best to scroll on down and find an example to work with. So, for example, with the Moors, you can see that the religion here is Islam. That's how it's spelt. It isn't capitalised at all. And, of course, if we look at the culture, it's Middle underscore Eastern. You just want to make sure that you spell everything right. Formatting is, of course, really important when you fiddle around with the files. So back up to the Holy Roman Empire then, we're going to save this up with Islam, then we're going to load the game and see what changes just changing the religion makes. Here we are then as the Holy Roman Empire, you can see here that our official religion is now Islam. But that does give us a few problems because we haven't changed the religious balance in the town to start with. We're still 80% Catholic, so that's giving us 80% religious unrest. I will though show you how you can change that a little bit later in the video. For now though, the important thing is that our main religion is clearly Islam. If we head on to the overviews tab, you'll notice that we're missing the Pope section over here. We obviously are no longer part of the Catholic religion, which means that we have no influence in the Cardinal College. However, whilst we are now Muslim, we aren't actually part of the Middle Eastern culture, and that means that we still have things like the brothel and the inns available to us. Obviously that gets replaced by the shisha bar, but that actually comes under the culture. So until we change that, we're still going to get some of these old buildings here. You might notice that I can still build churches, and indeed, I actually have a small church in the town already. Now this is because we haven't actually changed around the buildings file, something else we'll have to do a bit later. But in the meantime, you might think that this is actually converting the people to Catholicism, but that's not what's happening at all. It should convert 1%, but it won't do that whatsoever. We're currently on 80%. If I end my turn, what you'll find is it does nothing at all. Nothing for Catholicism and nothing for Islam either. On to turn two then, in the snowy depths of winter, we'll still find that the Catholicism is at 80% here in Frankfurt. And yeah, basically the church is doing nothing at all. We might as well go and demolish it, although of course that will go and annoy the Pope. But if the churches aren't doing any converting, then who or what is? Well, of course, normally it would be these chaps as well. It would be our bishops or our cardinals. But this guy here, whilst he looks like a bishop, you might notice, yeah, he can declare a jihad, much as you might well expect that any kind of an imam would. Now, he obviously still looks like this. That's because we haven't actually changed around what the characters looked like. We have a similar thing here. We send out our army. He still looks like a northern European general. So that's something we will need to go and change around later. But he is actually still converting areas to Islam. This is now up to 4% because he's been over here in the end turn. We're going to send him over the border. Now he's going to be in Frankfurt region. And this time, this time we should find that Frankfurt converts just a little bit over to Islam. 
onto the sunny climbs of turn three and we can see that the region is now four percent islam it's been converted by this chap even if he looks like a bishop he's still working for islam because that is our faction we've seen the difference that change in the religion here makes but let's go and just change the culture on this particular occasion and all the islamic factions are of the middle eastern culture so i'm going to go and grab that copy it head back up to the holy roman empire and change that round over here now for now i'm just going to change islam back to catholic and that's simply because we want to see what changes happen simply by changing the culture so we're going to go back in the game see what difference this makes and from there we can figure out how we're going to put it all together and make a properly islamic holy roman empire we are back then as the Holy Roman Empire, but this time Middle Eastern. You can see it here based on the city's design on the map. One of the most important things, though, is we now have the Pope Bar back, because we are officially now Christian, even though we do look awfully Middle Eastern in terms of our culture. We can, of course, see over here in Frankfurt that the UI has changed on the overview map. But it's also changed down here on the building tab, too. Indeed, the shisha bar is now available rather than the brothel, and all of these buildings have a much more Middle Eastern look to them. You might notice though we've still got churches here, and that hasn't flipped over to mosques at all. We do need to go and change it in a couple files, and we'll get to that a little bit later. The game does get a little bit confused by all of this at the moment. It's saying it enables the drain of an imam, and uh, yeah, the description isn't supposed to be here. Don't worry though, that won't destabilise the game. The game just doesn't really have any text designed for this situation. Now, whilst the overworld sprites may well look like they're Catholic, they definitely don't in the portraits here. Yeah, the portraits are definitely flipped to be Middle Eastern, and that also includes the Cardinal here, who, yeah, certainly looks more like a grand imam right now. These two faces don't really quite match up, do they? But it's all well and fine. Uh, you'll definitely get the best results by mixing both the cultures and religions together. So if you do want to change the Holy Roman Empire into a Muslim faction, it probably makes sense to make the Middle Eastern as well. It's um, there's just too many crossovers to make it work very well without. It will run, it's just I think it's going to look cleaner. I think I'll be more immersed in the game myself if I change them over to Middle Eastern and to Muslims. And actually, yeah. you can see the princes down here. The princes are interesting. We'll, we'll get to them later. Obviously, Muslim factions aren't supposed to have a princess, but uh, again, it won't destabilize the game. The game will just, um, yeah, be upset about the text file sometimes. In fact, you can see a good example of that right here with a betrothal for our Princess Agnes. The game is a little bit confused, but honestly, there's no problem. You can still get her married. The game will process it, and there'll be no more problems. Changing the religion is obviously far more impactful than changing the culture. But of course, mixing them both together is what's going to get the most dramatic result of all. But it doesn't quite solve all the problems. We still have ourselves the churches here in the town, and on our building browser as well. That's something we need to change. And not simply because it looks wrong, but because they're not actually converting anyone to Islam. And if we are going to be playing as an Islamic faction, we definitely need that to be working. The second thing is these overworld sprites. At the moment, yeah, this, um, this Catholic bishop here isn't really working. We've got ourselves the portrait, but not the sprite. Again, not too difficult to change. The last thing is what we've noticed in the town here, which is the starting religions. So we do need to go and change that over so we begin as far more Islamic. How then are we going to go and solve all these little problems that have come up? Well, of course, the answer is to go and change the game files. It is quite simple to change these three things, although some of it is a little bit fiddly. So to start with, we'll go and change the buildings. And for that, we need to head inside the data folder. And down the bottom of here, we get export underscore desca underscore buildings. We've looked at this little file here before, I have a completely separate video on that. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, do go have a little look at that. It's in the link in the description below. But for now, I'll show you exactly what we want to change for this little guide. Once inside the file then, what we need to do is look for the Muslim temples. And then we can go and change around the files as we need to. But of course to do that, we need to know how the file refers to our faction. You can see here that lots of them are named. And the one we want for this is the Holy Roman Empire, which is HRE. Just make sure before you start, you know exactly how your faction is referred to in the file. Once you know that, you can head down to the Muslim temples. So I'm gonna search for Masjid, and that means I will now be able to see this particular section here, the Muslim temple buildings. Now, it's fairly simple enough to go and understand. You have this other small Masjid, the next level up, Masjid, Minareted Masjid, Jama, Great Jama. And essentially what you have here are the list of factions 
that can actually go and build that building. So what we want to do is simply add HRE to the list. Now just make sure you get your formatting right. I'd probably suggest the best thing to do is just go and copy this little bracketed section here. And I'm just gonna continue to go and add them in. While we're here, we can give ourselves the priests as well. It just means that we won't have any issues. So I'm gonna go down this file and every time we've got one of these buildings, I'm just gonna continue to go and paste the Holy Roman Empire in. You may notice here that actually the priests can't be recruited by either the Timurids or the Mongols. Um, not quite sure why they didn't make that available to them. I noticed that in my uh, in my Timurid campaign, and this is the simple fix that I needed to do to fix it. If I ever go back and play a little bit more of that, that is what I'll do. So once you've gone and changed all of this, we'll be able to go and load up the game, and we'll be able to go and get ourselves all of the temples and get the priests from them. To be careful though, it's very easy to miss the castle version of the building, which is just below the city version. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing on this second set of buildings as well. I won't bore you by having the entire clip of me going down each one systematically, but you get the idea. You do need to just check both of these sections, fill all of this in. The other half of the problem though is that you're currently able to build the Catholic cathedrals. So what we need to do is take us out of that section as well. So each time we go through the list here, we need to make sure that we aren't on any of them. Now this can be quite fiddly, it's very easy to make a mistake on here. And I know I often get comments which say, oh, this hasn't worked. And honestly, it is so simple to just miss one little bit of text somewhere, leave one too many spaces, miss out a comma, or just leave it a tiny bit of text somewhere where you shouldn't. So just be careful, flick through, take your time, save and reload every time you change anything in the file, just to make sure that you don't go and ruin it. Because if you go and make a couple mistakes, it, honestly, I will almost always find it easier to just start a fresh file and start all over again. Hopefully though, you'll get through all of them and eventually we've got the buildings fixed. Now, of course, it's all well and good removing the churches from the list of buildable buildings, but of course our cities already start with some. So we need to go and remove them by heading inside the world subfolder. And inside there, we're gonna to go to maps, to campaign, imperial campaign, and this file here, the ever trusty Deska underscore strat. Ah oh yes, back inside Deska underscore strat, and we know this file very well now, don't we? So let's go and head towards the Holy Roman Empire, and once we do that, we can go have a look at the town of Frankfurt. And inside there, there is of course the small Catholic church. Now I could just go and highlight all of this, delete it, and be happy and done with it, but I think it's fair enough to go and put a small Muslim church in there instead. And by church, I obviously mean a masjid. So I'm gonna go and search for that slightly further down to just find a good example that I can steal. So here in Cordoba, just gonna copy that, head back up file to the Holy Roman Empire. And we can just have a little look for any churches in these towns. To be honest, I don't think they have any other than in Frankfurt itself. The Holy Roman Empire doesn't really get on with the Pope very well. So in many ways, this campaign seems quite fitting. Um, right, it's gonna highlight the Catholic temple there, replace it with the Masjid. I can save that up. And now we're gonna have the right buildings. We're gonna be able to build the right buildings and we'll be able to go and get our Imams out of those. There is actually another thing we need to do as a result of that there. And because we just gave ourselves priests from the mosque, we need to head inside data and then the UI folder to go and sort out the info cards because we'll still get the info card for the Catholic priest. So inside unit info, we can go and grab the priest from Egypt. Let's go down to the bottom, go and copy that, head back into the Holy Roman Empire. We just need to paste that in here. Don't worry if it's gonna overwrite anything, it's fine. It just means that now you'll get the correct card. And we get back into the UI folder to do the same inside units here. So into Egypt, Go and grab yourself the priest, there he is in the corner, head back into the Holy Roman Empire, and that will mean we've got the correct info cards. And if you're not pernickety about that kind of thing, that just means that that will look correct. On to the next problem then, and that is the characters. So to solve this, we're back inside data, and we're gonna scroll down to Deska underscore character. It's a little bit further up, and you can see it's right here. So let's open it up and see what we need to do. 
This one is less likely to see you go wrong than the building section, which is incredibly fiddly. This one, though, just takes five or ten minutes of checking over. Now, we're obviously going to head over to the Holy Roman Empire. We can see here that their model is that of a northern general, and they have this sort of equipment like Gladius, Chainmail, yada, yada, yada. Now, of course, we can just go and take whatever equipment we want from the Turks here and just go and replace it. That will change our overworld sprite of the generals. But that isn't the only thing we want to change. If we head further on down, you'll start to find that we see all sorts of things. So here are generals, and if we continue to come down further and further and further, you'll find all the different agents we find in the game. So we're going to have to change it for spies, for the assassins, for the diplomats, all of those lovely, lovely, lovely people. As I was changing around some of these, like the Islamic spy here, I did notice a few oddities that I thought you might enjoy seeing, which is, yeah, the Aztecs here can't get any spies because they've got themselves the same colons next to it, which basically deactivates these lines of the text. Same thing we see with the rebels down here. Of course, we did play as the rebels in Medieval 2 Total War. We couldn't get anything like the spies, the assassins, or the diplomats. Indeed, um, presumably, if I take away these semicolons here, I would be able to. So maybe we'll have to have a fiddle round with the rebels once again. Same thing over here on assassins. Same thing on the ambassadors, the diplomats, of course. Now, um, yeah, the admirals, slightly bizarre one. We've got all these leftovers from Rome Total War here. Macedonian admirals, for example. Um, I guess you never see these guys, so it doesn't strictly matter. What potentially is the weirdest one, though, are the princesses. As I said at the start of this video, you're not supposed to have Islamic princesses on this game. Um, but they do have themselves a model, technically. So I've gone and taken the princess for Egypt, and I've gone and added that in for the Holy Roman Empire. You'll see what that looks like soon enough. It's um, it's an interesting one. Definitely something I took away from all this. Merchants are fairly standard, to be honest. Nothing too interesting there. Um, although I would just guide you on the priest section over here. Um, this section, there's a lot more of extra text on the right. Just be careful not to miss a line out here. It's very easy to go and highlight all of this and miss that last line there, and you're going to muck up the file. Just be careful. You can make sure that you get everything right. You can see here, I've got it all set up. The last bits on the bottom are just about the heretics and things. Again, something I might want to fiddle around with for the old rebels. But anyway, that's pretty much this done. All of those overall sprites will be fixed. Now, on to the religion. Solving the religion in the cities at the start is kind of the simplest, but equally the strangest of the three things to solve. Now, to do that, we're going to have to go inside data into the world subfolder and go to maps. Inside there, we normally go into campaign, which leads us to the desk underscore strap. But this time, we're going to head into base, and this is the file we need to fiddle with, desk underscore regions. Essentially, the problem is that anything you change inside this file, the game will just revert back to its original state. So, for example, we know Frankfurt is 80% Catholic. We could change it to 80% Islam, but the game will just go and throw it back to its original file. When you load up the game, it will just be 80% Catholic. Now, the solution to this is a strange one, but basically, delete this file here. I don't know why it works, it just does. Now, open up this file, and anything we save in will work. That little thing will come back afterwards, but it's fine. For some reason, this is the way it works. So, delete that random little file I just did, and then we're going to open up desk underscore regions. Once you've circumnavigated that little problem, the rest of it's embarrassingly easy to do. We're just going to go and find Frankfurt here. Do be aware though, it's case sensitive. And once we've done that, it's really quite obvious. You go find Catholic, change it from 80 to 0, and go and change Islam up to 80. It really is that simple. You just fiddle around with the religions tab down here, and then we're going to save up and load up the game. Good news, everybody. We have ourselves a Majid over here in Frankfurt. And from that, we can, of course, go and hire those Imams. We've obviously changed the unit card too. So it all looks perfect. Over here in Nuremberg, we can go and build one as well. And the most important thing is, of course, we changed the religion at the start of the game. It's now 80% Islam, which is just magnificent. More than that, though, we've obviously got ourselves the overworld sprites. We've got our good old general over here. We've got ourselves all the random units, all looking suitably eastern. And yes, of course, down here is our imam himself and uh, the best the best of them all, Princess Agnes. Princess Agnes looking resplendent in her pink tunic there. Yeah, um, I did say the Islamic factions weren't supposed to have princesses. So uh, yeah, this is the result you get if you go and choose that particular sprite. We have ourselves, yeah... 
the, uh, the, the Tinder profile version of Agnes down here and uh, the chap who actually turns up on the date. So, yeah, choose whichever you like. I kind of like in this princess. She's, uh, she's marvellously good fun. But you can see here it's just about all come together. We have ourselves a Muslim Holy Roman Empire and I think we're pretty much ready to continue with this campaign tomorrow. I'm very intrigued to see where all this would take us. It's a fun little experiment.